I want to welcome you back to the 11th hour today. Man, what a song, climbing up on, to destiny, to look out over our future. You know, God has a bright destiny. He has a bright place for us. He has a place that the world can't see. But I'll tell you what, it is also a place where darkness can't hold it down and seize on it. Let's go over to St. John chapter 1 real quickly, and I want to look at, at this in the uh, starting in verse 1, St. John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In other words, the, the darkness, the word comprehend means to hold it down and seize on it to where it can't. It's like there's a war going on. And it said that Jesus in him was the life, and that life is the light of men, the zoe life of God. What makes God God? He said that's in him. He's God in the flesh. And he came in and he shined into this darkness, this darkness that Satan created this void. He's always trying to create a void where he can walk around and loom in the darkness and just walk around in it to hold down the light and the destinies of people. But it says here that this light shined in darkness and the darkness couldn't hold it down and seize on it. And the proof of that was even death couldn't hold him. Death couldn't hold him. Resurrection power. You can't bury the truth and expect it to stay underground. It will make its way to the surface. Hallelujah. Wicked people need to remember that. Wicked politicians surely ought to remember that. Then it said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You see, the prophets come to bear witness of that light. We are here to bear witness of it, that Jesus is the light, that the darkness can't hold it down and seize on it, and your destiny is as bright as God can make it. Your future is as bright as God can make it, and there is nothing can hold that down and seize on it and successfully keep it there. The only way you will never fulfill destiny is if you stop trying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the prophets are here to bear witness of such power, such light, such life. Amen. How, why is that? Because we've been to the future and saw it and come to tell you what's there. And your future is hugely bright. Amen. Amen. Last night, I was listening to the song. I was listening to uh, the Sunday service here at CI, and I was listening to the song, How Great Thou Art, and how that just kind of spontaneously happened. The power and the anointing on the confessions in the song. The thought crossed my mind. How much longer will we be free to sing such songs? If the one world globalists have their way, songs like this will soon become a thing of the past. To be archived so deep, they'll never be found again. Yet it must be remembered that in these powerful songs and confessions, they are full of this resurrection power. And no matter how, no matter how you beat on them, no matter how many spears you run into their sides, no matter how many nails you drive into them, no matter how many government soldiers are set to watch and make sure they are dead and forgotten, sooner or later, the ground will begin to shake. Sooner or later, the ground will begin to rumble. 
as the great conquering resurrection power within them will start bringing them to the surface once again. Hallelujah. So sing these songs. Sing them loud. Sing about the resurrection. Sing about what God has done. And receive all of this. Sing about it. What he's done. Sing about it. Hallelujah. And do this within all of his people. Tell governments and religion and the whole bunch that will not, we will not quit singing about Jesus or his mighty conquering of death, hell, and the grave. Don't attempt to bring it and uh, don't, don't attempt to bury it and seal it in because it will resurrect again. Hallelujah. How far, old oh politicians, will you dip your hand into the barrel of corruption before your hand will be seen? It is stained with people's blood. How long, old oh religion, will you continue to bury the power of God? It was said that Caiaphas was dragged out, the high priest in Jesus' day, was dragged out of the fraudulent high priest, was dragged out and was horribly killed by the government. It is also taught that Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, died by beating his head against a wall because he realized that he had killed the Messiah, Jesus. What happened to Pilate? It is said, remember Jesus said to Pilate, the lesser sin, that he had the lesser sin, that the high priest and the chief priest and elders that delivered him to him had the greater sin. It is taught that the emperor ordained or ordered Pilate to kill himself. Pilate was living in Switzerland, they said, and he killed himself by order of, the, of Caesar. And it is said that they threw him down into this hole, this pit-like, and it's surrounded by demons. So corrupt governments and corrupt religious leaders, take heed to what you do. Hallelujah. Especially what you do with the Christ and with his message. Last night, I was um, around, I wrote it down, uh, 118 a.m. Yes, here it is. 118 a.m. This is October 24th. Am I right about that? 118 a.m. I heard, and I didn't realize at the moment I was hearing a conversation happen around me somewhere. I don't know exactly where it was. But I heard the words disaster as Israel goes to war. And I heard decisions have been made. God help us all. That was in a conversation somewhere. It said decisions were made. God help us all. And the Lord began to say these things to me. It has begun, says the Lord, for now it has the offensive. I have said it and will say it again. Israel is forever. Never to be forgotten nor forsaken. God had them all. There will not be one man left behind. I heard the Lord say, advance, 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 says the Lord. These others, tell them halt. Tell them to take a hike. For it has begun. Go, go, says the Lord. Then I heard this. Erdogan, you stand with your big stick in your hand. Drop it and go home, for this is not your time, says the Lord. China, this is not Maui. 
This one, O oh fire-breathing dragon, I will roast you on a spit. Go home. Go home now. Lest dragon fight the eagle. Go home. Then I heard this word. I don't know that I've ever heard this. Lithuania. Lithuania. Your name now has been called. Take heed lest you fall. You are an instigator trying to drag someone bigger than you into it. To those, then I heard this, to those who turned your back on the prophets, you say you stand with them, but do no action to back it up. You will be forgotten in this. Not by my doing, the Lord says, but by yours. Then he says this, I have been weighing the nations for months, and they should not have dragged Israel in on it. Nations, someone says, lining up to get on the scales, saying, weigh me, weigh me. Some of you would have never been weighed, says the Lord, had you not brought Israel into it and in on it. You nations who have killed without, and you individuals who used nations and their armies to kill the innocent, now you. And it's not clear whether it was you, O nation, or those individuals using those nations, but you, O nation, you who are individual will die. You will not make it because you showed no mercy. That's the words I heard before daylight this morning, writing it all in the dark. That's why you hear me reading around words. I'm trying to figure out exactly some of the things I said that I had written down that the Lord said. See, why do we think it's strange that prophets will give words from the Lord to nations, to the nations of the world? I don't know why we think it's so strange. It's because we're so far removed from the office of prophets and what they say that it sounds strange to us. But why do we think it's strange that prophets will give words from the Lord to the nations of the world? When nations are players in moves that affect Israel, God's people, he will speak to prophets. If there is silence and the prophets are not speaking, then prophecy that has already been spoken is sufficient for the time. At that time, you are in a time of faith. When you don't hear prophets speaking, you are in a time of faith to stand on the word and stand in faith for what has already been said. For years, the prophets wasn't talking much because it was a time to learn faith, speak faith. And it's still that time to learn and speak faith. But there was no prophets really talking loud for a long time. But now there is, and they're giving words to nations, not just to this nation, not just to Israel, but the nations surrounding all of this because they're all become players involving Israel. So prophets are talking. Nations need to take heed. Erdogan, you need to take heed over Turkey. It's not your time. China, fire-breathing dragon, you better take heed and go home. This is nothing concerning you. Now, at that time, you're in a time of faith, believing what God has already said. But when the prophets start talking, then you have to understand something new is about to happen. And the prophets have already seen what's coming. 
It's just like when the Lord sent me to Israel and, and had me prophesy on all these places. And we still haven't found yet when I was on, on the Golan Heights there and got off the bus in that high wind and it was cold and stood there looking over on the Syrian border and so forth and, and prophesying. We haven't found that yet. And prophecy that was given from within Jerusalem. The Lord will show us the time for these to be released. But there are some things, if the word of God has plainly said something, then you need not seek to hear a prophetic word from a prophet or anyone else. If the word has spoken it plainly, then don't run around trying to hear a word from a prophet concerning it. Because all prophecy is based on this, and this, this trumps anything. This is higher than anything else. All gifts of the Spirit, all prophetic utterances, everything is subject to this book, not the other way around. Hallelujah. For instance, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, prophetic words are given to navigate mysterious waters. Waters, you know, I saw prophet, prophecy one time and I saw the prophetic it's, it's always dark waters, and waves will swell up in the middle of it like that and just kind of roll up and go back down. I asked the Lord, I said, and of course the dark waters are mysterious. They're prophetic waters. And the waves and the swell up of the water within it, underneath it, that makes those big rises that I saw, the Lord said that's time swelling up the prophetic waters. Prophetic words are for a lot of things. One thing, they're given to navigate these mysterious waters, to tell what is coming from seeds that have been sown. But where the written word has said it, that is a time to use your faith. There is no reason to begin to search out prophetic meanings. Not if the word has said it. It's the time to use your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the prophet Agabus in the New Testament, he was used to tell of an upcoming famine and again to warn the Apostle Paul. Prophets can present uh, what's on the other side of an action, or, but the prophetic always brings people to the point of decision. Prophets have the secret things of the Lord revealed to them. And the scripture says, if you believe those prophets, you'll prosper. So prophetic things that the word has said already, there's no need to go around asking prophets, give me a word. Do you have a word? Do you have a word for me? Do you have a word for me? Yes, most of the words for you are right here. They're all right here. See, the Bible says Jesus is the only way. He's not a way. He's not a door. He's not a truth. He's not a life. He's the only way, the only door, the only truth, and the only life. There's no reason to seek a prophetic word about that. That's who he is. He is God in the flesh. You don't have to seek prophetic words or any other word concerning that. That's who he is. God wants you healed and well. You don't have to seek a prophetic word about that. The scripture says, by his stripes, you were healed. These are points to use your faith on, not to ask for prophetic words. Prophetic words are given to navigate mysterious water. It's sent to navigate things, but they always line up with the word. And they always reveal the hidden things that were in the word. Hallelujah. So, uh, I just wanted to come and tell you that today. I wanted to tell you those prophetic things the Lord had said to me. I wanted to tell you about to keep singing about resurrection power. Keep singing about the power of God. Keep, keep talking about it. Keep preaching about it. It don't make any difference. If Facebook shuts you down. Just do, do it somewhere else. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't quit talking about resurrection power. Because the truth will come up. It will rise. The truth will rise again. I don't care how deep they bury it. It will rise. Hallelujah. So, so be sure to keep proclaiming. Be sure to keep doing these things. Remember these things. 
Hallelujah. And I wanted to give you those words. I wanted to give you the words for the nations, the words concerning Israel, the conversation that I heard last night in the dark. They were so strange in, in my hearing. I was hearing them. And I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He said, this is a conversation. You're hearing a conversation. Decisions were made. And now disasters pending on those decisions. A word for Israel, another word here for Israel. They're already trying to tell you, and they will continue to try to tell you, don't advance, don't advance, don't advance. But the Lord said, advance, 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 go, go. They'll try to tell you, don't take and hold this land. Oh, don't do it. And just because they have enough power around you to force you in not taking it, just take it. Advance into the land of Abraham and show the life of God in that land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, come on, Kristen, receive our offering today. Amen. A song of destiny, a, a day of prophecy. And if the Lord gives us anything else, I'll come back and say it. Amen. Come on and tell us how to prosper. Amen. Well, the first step to prospering is making Jesus the Lord of your life. That is the first step to prospering spiritually, physically, financially, and every way in between. All the things. You must make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, we've, we've come to a point in time where people are just too, they're, they're too afraid to say just the blunt truth that, if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not spend eternity in heaven. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Hell was never created for you. It was created for Satan and his angels. It was not created for man. Earth was created for man to live while he prepared a place for us in heaven. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. So that, that tells you right there, there was a place created for you. And it's called heaven. And there's been too many people miss out on heaven. And I don't want you to be one of them. And it is the easiest thing in the world to do. And all you have to do is just say, Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And just to add something with it, because we've been talking about destiny, say, take my life and do something with it. And if you said that prayer today, my friends, if the Lord came back today, guess what? You are spending eternity in a place called heaven. And you'll, you'll be there with me because I'm going on the first load. Amen. Amen. So that is your first step to prospering. Then know this. As, as Roxanne's son Luke says, hear this. Hear this. I want you to hear this. After you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's a scripture that says, Now occupy until I come. Because he is coming back. He, he is coming back one day. And he's coming back for those who believe. He's coming back for those that believe in him. But he said, Occupy until I come. Which means, take up space here. Have dominion. One scripture says, do business with this until I come. And it, that scripture is talking about money. It actually says, occupy with this, basically, until I come. So that tells us right there that he wants us to prosper in the meantime while we're here. We don't have to live suffering. We don't have to live broke. We don't have to live in shame and embarrassment and anger because we don't have enough to get through the day. That's an offense of the curse. That's not, that has nothing to do with the blessing. 
has absolutely nothing to do with the blessing. It says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and it adds no sorrow to it, with it, at all. It ain't there when the blessing is active in your life. But it's there when the curse is active in your life. But see, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, Scripture says that he absorbed the curse into his body. He became the curse for you so that you didn't have to accept the curse. You didn't have to live in the curse. Did you know why we live in the curse? Because we choose to live there. Because it says, I set before you this day blessing or curse. You choose. Well, guess what? Newsflash, you must have chosen. You must have chosen to live in the curse. I'm sure I've chosen to live in the curse before. You know, whether you do it knowingly or not, we still choose. We still choose because it's like, even if it comes down to just the simple, like I was talking Sunday, just complaining instead of blessing the Lord. That's choosing the curse over the blessing. And when we choose one little thing of the curse, it allows multiple things of the curse. Yeah, and you know, you know, uh, when you said that, there used to be an old saying about the phone company back when phones had cords, you know. Uh, there used to be a, a saying that says, um, you know, you want to choose before a choice is made for you. Yeah. In other words, not choosing is a choice. Like if you just back up and say, oh, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm just not going to. I, if I don't participate one way or the other, then I'm not, I'm not, I haven't made my choice. Yes? Right. It's like the old phone company. You have to make a choice or one will be made for right. you. And so when you back away and you don't choose to act on the word mm -hmm. and you don't choose to. See, that's what I was saying, Krista, earlier. That's kind of one of the things I was talking about, that if, if we... If the word plainly says something, you don't have to go to prophets hunting a right. word. Right. The word has said it. And it says give and it'll be given to you. Right. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Well, you don't have to go and say, do you have a word about my prosperity? Do you have a word about this prophetic? Uh, no, the scripture had a word right. about that. Right. And so that's the time when the when prophets, when, when you don't hear a prophetic word and there's silence, that's the time to use your faith on what's already been prophesied. Yeah. You know, they call in Malachi the 400 years of silence mm -hmm. when there was no prophet on the scene prophesying. But that was the time of faith because all the prophecies had already been, they, had, they were still catching up through that whole time. Mm -hmm. And so it was the time to believe Messiah was about to, yeah. you know, and all of this and, and just on and on and on and on. It was the time to believe what the Messiah had done, to believe what the prophets had said. Right. So if you don't make a choice to stand on the word, a choice is made for you. Yeah. There's only one choice after that. Yeah. The curse. That's right. That's it. There's only one other curse. I mean, there's only one other choice if you don't stand on the word, and that's the curse. So the Lord said, I set before you this day life, which is the word, yeah. faith. Right. That's life. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. Right. Or cursing. Right. Well, the cursing, you choose by not choosing the life. That's true. I just wanted, I don't know, I, I felt like I should come and say that because yeah. some people will say, I've never consciously chosen the curse. You don't have to consciously right. do anything other than choose life. Right. You know, if you come out and said, I'm going to consciously choose the curse, well, then you're stupid. I mean, that, yeah. would, be, that would be ignorance gone to seed, yeah. as Brother Hagin used to say. But on purpose, choose life and act on his word. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just remember that where the word is plain, you don't need to go around seeking a word on that. The written word trumps all the other words. Amen. Amen.
Amen. And and he goes on to say that afterwards. So he he ba- scripture backs that up because he says, "But choose life, so that you and your seed may live." So he pushes us in the right direction. He gave us the answer. It's like you don't have to wonder which one should I choose. He actually tells you, "But choose life." What you just said sparked another thing. Well, come on. Well, I mean. <laughs> Think about what you just said. You said, but choose life that you and your seed Mm -hmm. may live. Yeah. You and your seed. Now, we realize it's talking about your children, your generations to come. But if we look at giving Mm -hmm. as seed, Mm -hmm. then choose life on purpose. Yeah. That you and, and your, your seed, seed yeah. may live. So without life, your sowing can't live. Right. It just can't live. It's like sowing into gravel. Yeah. Sowing into just no, nothing conducive to seed. So you choose faith in the word. Choose the life, the light. Choose that. Yeah. So that you and what you plant may live. May live. Hallelujah. I believe I preached a whole offering message about that one time at Church International on a Sunday morning of, of <clears throat> choosing life so that you and your seed may live and that it may go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, which is what we're called to do. It's what we're commanded to do. This is as believers. We are to go ye into all the world and preach this gospel Preach the gospel that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And let's start, let's start taking more people with us when we, when we go. We, we want to know, you know, you never know what your seed, who your seed reaches in the future. You never know that until you get on the other side. You know, I said that yesterday on Elijah Fire. I said, you know, I was reading Thomas Paine word, Thomas Paine's words. These are the times that try men's souls. But then it goes to say, whoever stands now deserves the thanks of men and women. And I said, well, I said, that's, you know, men and women here. I said, the thanks and everything, you know, that's great. That's encouraging. I said, but have you ever thought about this? I said, the way that we want to get to heaven one day and and speak to Gideon and say, thank you for standing and thank you for for doing what you did because your story inspired me, your story encouraged me. Or I said, you want to go to Esther and thank her and say, thank you for standing and thank Thank you for answering the call because it was reading your story that gave me the encouragement. And there's person after person after person in the scripture. I want to personally thank Mary for standing and doing what she did and, and, and standing against adversity. But have you ever thought that you may be somebody that somebody comes up to in heaven one day and says, thank you, I read your story and it inspired me and it encouraged me to keep going because you stood during this time. You never know who you may be reaching. And you say, well, I can't physically go. But I, you know, there's things, I have friends that have different ministries that I'm not called to do, but I can sow into them. And whoever they reach and wh- wherever they go, I know that I'm a part of that. And so that's, that's all that this is. It's not, it's not for us. It's for you. And people, people have a hard time believing that. They have a hard time believing that, that your giving is not, not for us, that it's for you. Well, I don't give. I don't give to, I don't sow my seed for that minister or that person. I don't sow my seed into a man. I know that I'm sowing my seed into good ground because I know that the word is true and I know what he says and I know it's coming up in my life. And so I'm like, if the Lord tells me sow into this, I say, sir, yes, sir, and I do it because I know that God backs his word up. 
And so that's what we have to believe. We have to ultimately believe that God backs his word up. And by doing that, you're choosing life and you're choosing the blessing. Amen. And in Luke 6, 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You say, I believe it, I receive it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Now for the tither, if you're tithing today, Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this Saturday night, we want to invite you to Church International in Warrior, Alabama for the first ever Intelligence Briefing Live with Robin and Steve. My dad and Steve Schultz did a series of 40 episodes on the Elijah stream called Intelligence Briefing, and it was one of my favorite series that, that has been done on the Elijah stream, not because I'm biased, but because it really was awesome. And uh, I know that it was some of your favorites also but this weekend is the first ever live in person they will be on the same stage at the same time in the same city and state and so come be a part of it that is this saturday night october 28th 2023 at 7 p.m central time doors will open at 6 p.m there's no registration required so you want to make sure that you get here early so that you can have a seat we also have our dear friends, Flyover Conservatives, David and Stacy White, had come in to host the event. And uh, the 11th hour team will be doing some prophetic worship before the intelligence briefing. So it's just going to be a night of, of really intelligence briefings. And so you want to make sure that you are a part of it and we want to invite you. But if you can't make it in person, remember it will be streamed on the Robin D. Bullock YouTube channel, uh, the one that you're watching it on the 11th hour on right now and also the Elijah Streams platform. So be involved one way or the other and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah. I was waiting on praise reports. I thought we, I thought we was going to do praise reports. Well, you know, this has been a good 11th hour, and um, the Lord has given some prophetic instruction, prophetic words to nations, to, to different uh, uh, people, and instruction to God's people. You know, when it comes right down to it, it is always uh, the written word of God. Always, always the written word of God. And every prophecy you hear will line up with it. If it's from the Lord himself. Amen. Now, you know, Krista told you how to be born again. Why don't you go ahead and get baptized in the Holy Ghost? Why don't you go ahead and do that? Because we are in the time that try men's souls. You know, and uh, so we are there. We are in that time. Try the souls of men. Mind, their will, their emotions. And this is a time that puts them on trial. This is the time that time's trying their soul, and time is, is a witness of the ages. Time is a witness of all the ages, and it will mark time as to what we did in this time. I want to tell you something. I want you to be encouraged about this before I, I lead you in this prayer. You be encouraged. Wickedness will not triumph. Now, you need to, you need to be encouraged about that. Wicked people, can, they, they make their plans and they do their secret deals and they, <laughs> they do all this stuff in private somewhere in a back room and their eyes just dance. 
just so wicked and evil. They just they, they act like a bunch of hyenas after a piece of raw meat. They just sure they're going to win this time. And every time they forget something, they're just flesh. They're flesh and blood. And it don't last. And it, sometimes it never gets off the ground good. And what you see happening right now, and what you saw happening in the Ukraine and all this kind of stuff going on, and then suddenly Israel is on the scene. And now everything else is just kind of takes a back seat. That's because one is man-made, one is, is uh, prophetic happening. And so wickedness can't make it in this time. Why? Because we won't let it. We won't let it. There's a power in the spirit that we resist. You can't resist spiritual power with natural means. You can't even, man, you can't sit and duke it out with the spirit and in the physical. You just can't do that. The only thing you can really do in the physical against a demonic spirit is just set your face like flint and refuse to move. The rest of it is done in the spirit. You know, Daniel was praying, and, and this uh, Gabriel came to Daniel, took 21 days to break through. He said, the prince of Persia withstood me for 21 days. He said, and then after, I, but I came the first day you called, but Daniel stayed in fasting and prayer, fasting and prayer, 21 days till that angel could break through. And he said, and then after I go, the prince of Grecia will come. Well, that's what happened, too, in the physical. The physical is always subject to the spirit, always subject to the spirit. Even when man was created, man is referring to the spirit in the likeness of God. The humus is the dirt. The spirit gave life to the dirt. It's always the dirt is only animated because of what happens in the world of the spirit. The dirt gets its animation from the world of life, from the world of the spirit. And so all these people with their trying to do everything they're going to do and all their dancing hyena eyes and they just look at each other and laugh yeah, like a hyena somewhere thinking they're in a back room and suddenly in the middle of the night a prophet hears what they're talking about. And then they prophesy it. The next thing you know, leaders are making decisions, listening to the prophetic and before you know it, the whole plan stopped. And then before they can get it off the ground good again, they just get old and die because they're flesh. They're just flesh. So we need to learn to fight in the spirit. Take authority in the spirit. Use this word that created all of, all of the natural world. The world was made by the word. The word became flesh. His name is Yeshua. Jesus. So start fighting in the spirit. And the way you can do that is activate your spirit by getting baptized in the mighty Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. You know, it was that fire that get that it was the Holy Ghost. That fire represented the Holy Ghost that Gideon had on the end of those torch that he put inside those pitchers. That was represented the Holy Ghost inside clay pitchers. Inside clay bodies. It was the fiery pillar that, that stood and kept Pharaoh back while the children of Israel went to safety at the Red Sea. That's the Holy Ghost. The glory led them in the day, a pillar of cloud and a fire by night led them in the night. And the fire held, held back all the, the uh, people and all the <laughs> people in the dark corners of the world. Held back Pharaoh and kept him back while they went forward. Well, that fire, when you got born again, you became a, a candidate for your pitcher to have fire inside of it. And so what you need to do is you say, Jesus, baptize me in the mighty Holy Ghost and fire. And with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I ask you to do that for me now, sir. Do it for me now, Lord. 
And I receive it now. And then just that whole, the Holy Ghost in you will start coming up on you. Start coming up on you. Man, and anointing you for service. And the next thing, you know, you know, Jesus didn't do one miracle till he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. When he came up out of that water and the Holy Ghost descended on him bodily like a dove, then miracles started. Think about that. Well, if that was what he needed to do all that with, then surely you and I do. So go ahead and say, thank you for baptizing me in the Holy Ghost and fire. And now I'm going to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance. You are praying in a language now that goes beyond all wicked men's plans. It goes right through the middle of their rooms where they're making all kinds of declarations and plans to destroy lives and take human beings' lives lives and destinies from them, you can pray and you go right through the middle of the room and they never heard you coming. They never saw you coming. And when you went through there, the Holy Ghost and fire began to burn up the chaff around him. And you went right through the room and went out on the other side where deliverance was for the people. So go ahead and pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the mighty spirit of God. Pray the mysteries hidden in God. Go ahead and do it, says the Lord. Lord, for I will back up those words and I will, uh, you will be praying what's in my mind, what's in my plans, what's in my perfect will for man. So go ahead and pray, says the Lord. Go ahead and do it today. Go ahead and lift up your voice out loud. Go ahead and do it in private and in a crowd. Go ahead and do it, says the Lord, and I'll start changing things and moving great ships called nations around you. Until they come into manageable waters. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it's been a good time today on the 11th hour. I want to thank you for tuning in, being with us today. I want all my partners to know I was praying over you last night. I'll be praying over you tonight. This is going to be, you're never a day without prayer. I want you to know that. I'm constantly, I pray over you all the time. I carry your names with me so that I can hold you in my hand and pray over you. Hallelujah. My partners, most precious thing, people in the world, precious things. Tony up in Tomball, Texas the other night came up to me. I couldn't get back there to her. Somebody said, there's one of your partners back there. They, wanna, they want you to, to speak to you, but they're, they can't get up here. He said, she's in a wheelchair, I think. I couldn't get back through the crowd. I said, go tell them to wave up here at me. And my intentions was to take my staff and stretch it out over that room back toward her and pray from the stage. The next thing you know, I know, here she comes on a walker, a rolling walker up on, in front, just laid over the walker. And you, you want to know why we do what we do? Tony believed it. She believed it. She's the one told Robin, said, you just put up your Holy Ghost umbrella and let the crap roll off of it. She's a prayer warrior. You could see the fire in that woman's eyes too. She looked up at me and then that fire was in her eyes. I knew. Man, that's one. She said, I'm your partner. And others came up to me, I'm your partner, I'm your partner. Well, I'm your partner too, and I'm praying over you every day. Hallelujah. Well, until next time we gather together right here around God's mighty word, I want you to remember, never forget that Jesus loves you. He loves you with everything in him. You're the reason he did everything he did. We love you too, and I want you to remember something. Never forget this, that God your heavenly Father is absolutely good. Shalom. Shalom.